Hello everybody and welcome to a new video for Lag Poker. Francesco here. Today I am going to speak about uh, super simplified strategies. More specifically, I'm going to speak about a strategy that you may have heard of, which consists in betting any two cards when you are in position. Is it worth? Should you do it? Well, let's find out. Okay, to do that, I will use uh, Deep Solver, which is uh, a great tool to quickly hand lock hands and study this kind of uh, exploitations. And I would say, uh, let's start from a situation in which uh, theoretically speaking, you should certainly not bet any two cards in position. For example, this board that you see on the right, the 985 with a flush row board, in a situation like this one, which is a button versus big blind, a single raise spot. If the big blind checks, you will see now that there is certainly uh, more checking than betting, theoretically speaking. And it makes sense uh, because of course this board is pretty good for the big blind. He's going to hit uh, a lot of decent and strong hands and it's very easy to defend. So betting any two cards here is certainly not the first thing you should think about. But having said that, a lot of uh, coaches and students in uh, schools uh, around are slowly implementing a strategy in which they still advise to bet range here. And why is that? Well, I will show you in a second why this can make sense in some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, pools, player pools, and why it's very effective. Simply because if we, for example, uh, hand lock this strategy and, for example, bet every single time one third, one third uh, pot bet, we are going to see this scenario. As you see, the uh, EV that uh, now you see the simplified strategy betting range, you see the button lost a decent amount of EV, uh, certainly more than you than we would like to lose by using a simplified strategy. But there is a catch. The thing is that, okay, we lost a big amount of EV, but the EV we lost is lost only if the big blind defends now properly to our new strategy. And the proper defense is something which is very, very difficult to achieve for the big blind. And it's this, as you see, if we bet always one third pot, the big blind should check raise us uh, combined up with, two, with the two sizings, but it should check raise us about 30% of the time. As you see, there is a lot of raising here, and I think it's very, very unlikely any of your opponents at the lower stakes is going to raise this much. And uh, there are also a decent amount of uh, unintuitive raises, things like seven, eight, uh, you raise a lot with draws, um, you should raise a decent amount of times with nine, um, you should raise also a lot of pair plus draw hands, which are not a raise in my opinion most of the time, it's like four or five off, let's say. And um, so, you know, the, the problem here is that if your opponent bets range, or if you bet range in this situation, you force your uh, opponent, in this case, to check raise a percentage of time which is very difficult to achieve. So it, it's very difficult for your opponent to, to raise enough. And because of that, uh, we, should, we, can compare, we shouldn't compare, let's say, the V of the optimal uh, strategy to, uh, to this, but we should compare the V of the optimal strategy to a more intuitive and common defense from our opponent, okay? What I want to say is that since we don't expect our average opponent to check raise this much, this much to check raise the 30% of the times, we should compare this, uh, we should compare GTO with the defense we expect. As an example, if we expect villain to check raise something more standard, for example, around 11%, let's 
let's say he check raises as much as he, sh as he should check raise versus an optimal Tibetan frequency, which we'll see now in a moment, uh, we see that the EV loss now uh, is only 0 0.2. It's very minimal and we used a very easy strategy. As you see here, we are betting range and VLAN is not anymore raising that 30%, but he's raising about 10%. And this is probably more likely to happen. So uh, that's the whole point. You know, if you bet range, you force your opponent to check raise a lot if he doesn't want to be uh, punished uh, for letting you bet range. And this is not gonna happen. So that's why a lot of people suggest, hey, if you're in position, you should just bet range because you know it, it's so effective. And I partially agree in the sense that, you know, if you're playing versus players who are not aware of what you're doing or are not aware of, of what they should do to punish you for betting range, it's working, you know? It's much, much easier to bet this strategy that you see right now, it's just a bet range with one third pot bet, than to bet uh, this strategy, okay? Uh, you may do a lot of mistakes if you try to implement this strategy and do it wrong, and it's also difficult to remember, of course. It's very easy to, uh, to play uh, this way, okay? And if the EV loss is so minimal, 0 0.2, uh, who cares really, okay? It, it doesn't matter much. I, I, I would uh, sign to lose this and be always right. I mean, you, you cannot miss this strategy, you know? It's just bad range. You, 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 there are no mystics here <laughs> involved. If you just bet one third, you're doing it right. And uh, if your opponent is not adjusting, the, the, the EV you lose is so, so minimal that it doesn't matter. And that's why when I play versus a recreational player, I typically bet very wide also on these kind of boards because, you know, it's just, I don't expect him to raise as much as he should ever. But, you know, you need to be careful to not make this uh, a habit because once you climb the stakes and once you start playing versus better opponents, if you uh, are, if you keep betting range, uh, they're going to notice and if they notice it's gonna be very easy to punish you and you are going to lose more EV than you would like once that happened. On the other hand of course if you realize that your opponent is betting range here for example you don't know you, you get to shoulder and you see that he bet one third with the, the trash hand uh, now you know how to deal with him you know you just have to uh, check raise much more than the standards would be and you should check raise all these kind of hands and you're punishing him pretty much and his his strategy is not any more effective um, especially if he doesn't defend as he should once you check raise because uh, not only if he bets range you should check raise more but also when you once you check raise you should defend quite a while so if he if he's not defending properly after that and after you counter adjust to him, he, his strategy is going to lose even more money than it should on a theoretical perspective. So yeah, I mean, think about it when you are going to simplify things. Uh, every, every time try to check with solvers and so on if a strategy makes sense and why. And regarding this specific uh, strategy of betting range in position, well, uh, my advice is if you're playing in a, in a field which is not that great, it may make sense. It's easier for you to follow and you're not punished enough, so it can work pretty well. Uh, but be careful versus good opponents because versus them, uh, there is no simple solution. You are going to, I mean, you, you will have to study the optimal one and try to implement something similar to that. And the earlier you start studying this solution, the better it will be for uh, when you will really need them, okay? So thanks for watching. Keep in mind that if you're interested in deep solver that I used in this video, you can have a 20% discount if you use our affiliate link. But anyway, uh, if you like my content, uh, remember to subscribe to my channel. And this, way, this is the best way to support the channel and also to uh, stay always up to date with my content. Thanks for watching and see you next time.